Hi everyone. So with today being the second day of Veeam On, um, our virtual event this year in 2020, one of the biggest announcements that we're making in the, the tech keynote, which by now you would have potentially heard or the embargo is definitely off so I can freely share this, is around Veeam Backup for AWS. And in particular, the version 2 that we've just announced with, and I'll, I'll just quickly run through this because I want to actually show the update process for if you're already using the version one of the product, the ability to perform that rolling update and get all of the good stuff that, that comes in version two. So just a high level bullet point of, of what those or well, what the key features are. So first of all, snapshot replication for AWS disaster recovery. So being able to send snapshots into different regions or different accounts. Change bot tracking, so we're going to understand what's changed since the last backup using our, our a new engine to achieve that. Also, application consistent snapshots and backups. So, if you are running a SQL box in an IaaS situation within AWS, or you're running some sort of application that requires consistency, then we can now achieve that using this this cloud native tool, and then also the uh, the RESTful API, so being able to integrate that into existing workflows or, or processes that you already have uh, out there. So before I get into it as well, so this has been a really fast moving product in terms of release. So if we go back to 2019 when we were allowed out and we could we could uh, attend conferences in person, at reInvent we announced and released the free version of Veeam Backup for, for AWS. So the version one of the product. So there are, well, there's three there's three options um, in the marketplace. There is the uh, the free, which gives us the ability to protect 10 instances with that, that one, um, that one free license. Uh, there's the bring your own license in terms of being able to have a flexible license that maybe you share with Veeam Backup and Replication on-premises, protecting your image-based backups, etc. using our Veeam Universal Licensing. Those instances are free or flexible to move between the, the assets. Um, and then also there's the Marketplace Edition, so being able to, to just run this on its own in AWS. So this blog is where I actually went through though a bit of an overview of what the actual product was it looks and feels exactly the same as the free version looks and feels exactly the same as the the other two that i mentioned the the only difference is is that obviously the the licensing and the the constraints on only being able to protect 10 with the free with the free instance so why what the purpose of the video is really i wanted to show just if you've got this already running today and maybe you're in the community and you're running this for for demo purposes or you're evaluating whether whether this is the right fit for for you guys so without going into it so again that blog post does cover that and i'll make sure there's a link in the description below um obviously you see here just a quick overview this gives us what we're protecting so i have nine instances i'm only protecting five of those and i have three policies and a total of one repository that I'm going to store my backups into. So instances, this is going to reflect that on my my AWS subscription. I know that I've also got um, Anthony's uh, AWS IAM account also added in here. So you're going to see his and mine both both sharing, or we have the ability to protect that cross account um, those cross account instances as well. From a policy point of view, again, we've got our backups configured or our policies configured. And if we just quickly run through what these look like without making it about this. So remember, this is version one. Um, policy name, what account we want to use to, to be able to protect that. What region we're actually going to protect with this policy. Specify the resources. Exclude particular resources if you if you need to. What does the snapshot look like? And this is one of the key changes in version two as well with, that I didn't list is is uh, the harmonization of 
the snapshot and backup. So if we are going to create these snapshots, we'll use those snapshots as the backup as well. Or sorry, we'll use the snapshots as the source to create the backup is probably the better way to to uh, to describe that. So snapshot settings, backup settings, this cost estima estimation, how long, based on what we're keeping, how much is it going to cost us roughly on, on this usage and snapshot usage. Additional settings, so how many times do we have to retry that if, if something fails, and also notifications. So very simple stuff. But the one thing I want to show is if, if you are using the free or the bring your own license, then we've got the ability to do the in-place upgrade into version 2. So if we jump down into support information, and again, by the time you get to seeing this, you're now going to see this option of the update. So we can just hit, and the update was pretty quick. You can install it. Okay, so the update took generally around five minutes. So I don't know if that will vary based on your, um, based on if you've got more policies or, or what you're doing. I wouldn't imagine so because this is very much an appliance model. Um, so we're just updating the the, the actual software within or the operating system within or the software within okay so now we jump back in see we've got some notifications here which I know is another update of what what came saying updates are available etc if we jump down into the support information you can now see that we are running that latest version we can now see if we look at the updater, you saw me go from, from there to look at this update and now we've got this specific updater that enables us to look at what and how to upgrade the underlying operating system, whether we up, whether we reboot, whether we install the other updates, etc. So by clicking install other updates, we can now say install those. So we upgraded to version two, which gave us this additional capability of being able to update the underlying operating system, which is an Ubuntu operating system that, that our software runs on. You can see there it's running through and it's going to install those updated packages on that if we then jump back just to see what else we can find in here that's potentially different so if we go down to our policies we can see a bit more a bit more detail around what has happened with that that policy instantly you see and if you were watching the vmon technical keynote you would have seen this this change up in the right hand corner you can see that rolling cost um, estimation as well. So by changing something in our, our schedule, whether it's backups, whether it's snapshots, you, that will also, if I say weekly retention, I say monthly retention, that should also start increasing that time. Maybe it's more if I was to say how many snapshots I'd like to keep. Let's say seven, apply. You saw that price go up. Now, this is a very tiny, tiny instance that I'm protecting, but all in all, it's a much more harmonized way of being able to schedule our snapshots and backups together. What are we going to keep? A rolling cost of the changes that we're making throughout that policy. Um, whether we want to replicate those snapshots off to a secondary location. We still do have that cost estimation and again it gives you that same information around snapshots if we're replicating that to a different AWS account obviously we didn't have that in version one the traffic that it's going to take to move that data from where to wherever it needs to go and the transaction costs for that
So I think we're going to see a lot more um, content around this. I just wanted to show really around the, the, the fast way of being able to update from version 1, again, from your free version to version 2, as well as the bring your own license, and how quick that came back up. Now, like I say, that was a five-minute update. wasn't really... It, it obviously turns off the service to so make sure that your policies are are not in, affected by that. But yeah, um, expect to see a load more content around that. I'll, I will do a, a walkthrough of, of everything in a more more detailed manner so that you can see what what uh, being backup for AWS now looks like. But with that, let me know what else you'd like to see as well. Thanks.